Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. So I'm just going to wait for everybody to come on before I even get started. I have a special guest who is joining us today. And so please go on ahead and share this broadcast with your friends. Listen, when we learn from other people who are wise, mm -hmm. you know, we in return will grow in wisdom. Our wisdom within will be sharpened. And so I'm just going to wait for you guys to come on so that you can feast with me. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to interview this awesome man of God. You know, this awesome entrepreneur. God is awesome, you know, he's amazing how he will connect you with dif different people because, you know, we are a part of one body with many parts. And so don't neglect, you know, the fellowship that, you know, we can learn from and benefit from. And so today, we have Mr. Parkinson with us. Uh, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, we're going to interview him and he's going to just impart wisdom okay, to us. And so go on ahead and get your notebook. I have my notebook right here. You know, my favorite one, yeah. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. And so today we're going to be made more prosperous because all that God has been doing in uh, Mr. Parkinson's life, you know, he's going to share with us and we're going to be able to grow. And that's what it is. God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? And so he's going to give us some knowledge through this, um, this awesome man of God so that we can prosper, so that we can be free. You shall know the truth and the, and the truth will set you free and you live. Knowledge can cause you to live, honey. Okay. So, yes, I believe he's on, and so we're going to just bring him on because I just want to learn from him. Yes, uh, hold on. I'm going to bring him on the camera. Hi, Mr. Parkinson. How are you doing? Hey, I am fan glorious, Stacy, as always. <laughs> fantastic and glorious all at the same time amen amen thank you for you know volunteering to be interviewed you know i it's an honor i saw you at let's go weekend and you were just interviewing everybody you know and i wanted to give you the opportunity to be able to be in a platform where you can be able to help other people and we can hear from you, give you your voice, you know, because you have something to say today. This is a day that God has orchestrated. He, he said the steps of a good man are ordered by God. So God needs to yes. Amen. And so I'm just going to read your Amen. Book. I'm going to read your bio because I want everybody to know who you are. So Mr. Parkinson was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and now resides in Memphis. He served in the United States Navy for seven years. He worked in corporate America for 35 years doing various jobs. And after the military, he answered his call into the ministry in 1998, where he has served in various positions. Along with his wife of 11 years. He is a beautiful wife, right? Yes, Yolanda. Yep. They have five beautiful children and seven grandchildren. Yes. And, it, you know, we're blessed to hear Candace on the power call. Oh, we yes. Share about this. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm out. Oh, my goodness. And she's like, so <laughs> little. She's young. And she's been an example for us. And she's definitely a boss. Amen. And you're raising her to be a yes. boss to be the head and not the tail. And so, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 is your family's um, birthright, okay? Portion and inheritance. I speak it over you in the name of Jesus. And so is there anything else you want us to know about yourself, about your background before I go into the other questions? Um, I mean, that, that pretty much sum up who finance is. I've always been straightforward. I mean, I've always tried to live a simple life. My thing is, has I've always been a teacher 
And I've always believed the fact that our people do suffer, as the word says, because of lack of knowledge. That's for that's why, for me, as we're going to get into this, you'll see my passion. Why I have such a passion? Because I believe the only way our people are going to get free is to be increased in knowledge and to not be selfish with the knowledge that we get. So, uh, no, I'll tap into more of that as we go on with this. I'm just grateful right now to be on a platform like this. And I thank you, uh, Queen, Warrior, Intercessor, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm just blessed beyond measures right now. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. And so how did you get started on your entrepreneurial journey? How did you get started on being an entrepreneur? I actually... I got started uh, really looking for, I was, as you said in the bio, I, I've been in corporate America. I knew at a young age when I first started working was when I got out of high school at the age of 18, finance wasn't cut out to be working for nobody else. And so <laughs> I've always looked for an opportunity to where I could do something and make money and, and really not have to give myself away for that because I always knew at a young age um, when I got into the workforce, people don't pay you. And, and realistically, they can't pay you what your value, what your worth is. So as I've just grown in life, uh, I found various, um, let's say, networking uh, opportunities. And I've been in sales. And so that was kind of my beginning path with the first networking opportunity I had. And I was like, okay, this is what I like. I like to have a freedom to do the things that I have passion. But up until three years ago, I never found an opportunity like the one that we're in now. And so my journey started a long time ago, really seeking a true vehicle that was going to allow me to uh, be who I was and to tap into that. So that's really how it got started for me, Stacy. So you knew at a young age, like, that working for, for somebody else for 40 years, was th that was not God's best for you. You knew at a young age. No, no, not, not by any means. I mean, I always had a high value within myself. And even though, you know, we all get indoctrinated into corporate America system that you go to school and get a good education and work for somebody else, I knew that was not my plan. Now, when I was younger, I didn't quite understand it. So it took me from 18 to my first venue, first um, actually platform at the age of 33, well, maybe I say 28, when I first got into the first networking industry. And I was like, hey, this is what I've been looking for. So it's taken me from 28 up until 49 when I found this opportunity being in care bars that it was like I had been searching, searching for that one entity that was going to uh, allow me to be the real me uh, without deceiving people. Mm, I like that. Without deceiving people. I like that because being a man of God, you know, everything has to line up with the word of God, you know, and yes. bring glory to God. Like you opened up, you said glorious, you know, and so everything has to bring glory to God. And I like how you, you said that where you don't want to deceive anybody else because you're bringing truth to set the people free. Yeah. Yes. So you said that um, working for somebody else, they can't really pay you your work. Amen? No. So no. What's, the, what's the number one, since it's not about money, right? Because they can't really pay you anyways, right? Right. What, 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 what's your main, let's see, the main reason why people press and fight to be an entrepreneur? Oh, man. Hey, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. My main reason is because here's what I found out. Um, entrepreneurs, if you look up the word entrepreneur, and, and I'm kind of a word out. Since I've been in ministry, I got into ministry in um, October. I answered the call October 11, 1998. And when I got into the ministry, God showed me at an early age on how to really study his word and understand his word on the level of just words. Because when you understand words, it gives you a different outlook to really where you're venturing in. And so when you look up the word entrepreneur, it talks about a person who organizes or establishes a business or multiple businesses. But here's what did it for me. Um, there's a synonym for entrepreneur and it's called freelancer. Now watch this, Stacy. 
<laughs> when I look, when when I when that word resonated in me, freelancer, what's the first thing that sticks out in that? Free. Mm -hmm. See, an entrepreneur is a person who solves problems. Because when you think of every entre true entrepreneur in the world, they have solved the problem. They looked into the world, they saw a need, and they created a, a resolution. That's God. That's, that's ministry. We look and see where the need is, and we come up with a solution because that's what God did. God said he, first of all, had to find someone who could, what, manage the garden. There was a need in the earth, but God had to find a man, create a man to solve a problem. So when you think of entrepreneur from the perspective of freelancer, watch this here, is first of all a free person. The second half of that is Lancer. Now this is going, this is, man, listen to this. The word Lancer comes from the Latin word Lance. And Lance is a spear, a sharp object used to pierce. Lancer, the word Lancer means soldier. So an entrepreneur is a free soldier who goes into the earth and fight for the problems of other people. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> wow. I have goosebumps. <laughs> now that was prophetic. That was prophetic. And so if you can please explain the significance of the word soldier. As soldier. You, and thinking about being an entrepreneur and thinking about everything that you've gone through. You, I don't think, I don't believe in coincidences. Why do you think that word soldier is is there? Like you said, it's a soldier. Soldier. Why is that significant for entrepreneurs? Well, see, here's the thing about an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is one who is who is willing to accept risk. And he's willing to get into a battle that everybody won't get into. And when you talk about a soldier, a soldier is one who has been reared up to not only take risks, but to stand with courage and go against everything that's coming against him. And that's what an see, there's the merging of an entrepreneur and soldier. We're willing as entrepreneurs to go against the grain, to go against the people that say we can't have the territory. And, and, and I'm trying to stay within the parameters of the outline because when I think about carrot bars, we're going into a territory that no one else has ventured in. And as soldiers, we're making a stand, taking the stand, saying we're going to take the country. I think about what God said to the Israelites. He said, go into a land that I'm going to give you. And so therefore, when I look at the land, see, I'm not looking at the, the giants in the land because it goes back to our mantra of gladiators. When we say, what is our profession? Our profession is a soldier who has been reared up for this type of battle and we won't back up. So an entrepreneur don't give up because the entrepreneur realizes he has a solution that is needed in the earth. And when he solves that solution, he has now opened up a different territory that other people can conquer. Wow. Pioneer. Mm. Okay. I'm going to contain myself. <laughs> but at any moment, I might just pass out because I, I know this is the Lord speaking because he showed me the word pioneer. And in order for wow. you to be a pioneer, you have to be, like you said, brave, courageous, go into ter new territories. You have, you, have to be, yeah. you have to be Caleb and Joshua. And you're like, I don't care yeah. about the giants. God said, that's our land. And it's flowing with milk and honey, the clustered grapes, the figs, and the pomegranates. We want all of it. And so you have to be brave and, and not be intimidated by any giants. And so thank you for, for breaking that down. I, I think I can listen to this on repeat just ooh, because it confirms to the rest of us that we're on the right path. And we, yeah. we all have that entrepreneur, the, the vein of an entrepreneur within us, the blood of an entrepreneur is flowing through us. We knew, all of us, 
from when we were younger that God had greatness for us. And they tried to put us in the schools and they tried to contain us and they tried to dumb us down. The Bible says we go back to the against the father and and we have worked out today, Mr. Lett emailed me off on the about you know race and culture. We have the keys of the kingdom. And God is going to call for us to unlock to the territory, to the blessings, not be afraid. I thank you for the Holy Spirit and I thank you when you said going against the grain and just going against all odds it reminds me of the salmon the salmon fish has to swim upstream you know mm -hmm. and that's what an entrepreneur is thank you so much okay yeah so yeah and, and see here, here's life. the go ahead huh? Go ahead. I, because see, here's the thing: when when we talk about going against the grain, especially as believers, here here's why we have to be careful in what we teach as believers. Because as an entrepreneur, one we're teaching personality, because an entrepreneur ho know who they are, and they understand what's on the inside of them. Two. As an entrepreneur, we're, we're establishing a financial plane by which anybody who taps into it can live a life of freedom and abundance because there statistically show there have been more millionaires created in the networking entrepreneur realm than it has been in the nine to five. And so my question was to God was why? He said, because of this one principle, do not be conformed to this world system. And so many times we're conformed to this world system, even in the church, that the church within itself will tell people to get their credit score and that correct and, and in line, but you're telling people to become obedient borrowers. Mm. Mm. And the borrower is a slave to the lender. Man. So when I become an entrepreneur, I'm not getting in the borrower's line. I'm getting in the abundant line. Mm. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Hi. See, So we have to change our mindset about the things we're speaking because God didn't call us, create us, and birth us in the earth to be just like the earth. He put us here to show a different standard of kingdom living, and I believe with everything in me, it's in the entrepreneur. It's in the free lancer. It's in the free soldier. Amen. 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 And I like how you refer back to Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. It says all these blessings are going to overtake you. And God says we're not supposed to be the borrowers. We're supposed to be the one that's lending and giving. And so you just really check that ignorance at the door. I mean, some people don't need, they think it's okay for them to get loans and go to college and get loans to buy houses and stuff, but that's anti-kingdom, you know, and we have to keep yeah. the kingdom to be able to be the, like you said, freelancers to go and to get what God has for us and not be afraid and not being afraid to go against what everybody else is saying because over here they're saying your credit score like you said and over here they're saying go to college but the entrepreneur is like no there is a better way there's a free way and i'm and i want to take the free path yes Thank you so much for breaking that down so um how did you hear about care bars uh, i actually heard about care bars through a good friend wait we have not static one second you're frozen. You're frozen on my end. I do. No, it's my end. Of course, okay. I always know when God is doing something amazing. Folks now want to call and interrupt the stream. Yep. Uh, Satan, we rebuke you right now. So I got in because my good friend, Mr. Ricky Johnson, at that time, nine years, he had told me about gold and he was telling me about care bars actually a year and a half prior to me actually getting involved. 
And so, uh, because again, my journey into the entrepreneur realm, not being successful because I was looking for that one entity, at that time, I didn't really want to hear anything about networking. And it took my apostle uh, back in uh, June of 2016, uh, January, March, April, May, and June, May and June 2016, he was teaching on possessing the land. And he was teaching kingdom principles that we ought to own land, we ought to own property. And he started talking about gold. Well, he had did this teaching. And in the midst of one of his messages, he said, now y'all have heard what I've been teaching. You all can do what you want to do, but I'm going to start acquiring gold. And it went off in my head. I'm like, hmm, I need to call Mr. Ricky Johnson. And I called Ricky and I said, man, listen, tell me about this gold thing. And he got 15 minutes in, Stacy. And I said, you don't have to say anything else about it. What do I need to do? And um, I instantly signed up. He said, it was like it was a free registration. I'm like, are you serious? Free? And so I signed up, I signed my wife up, I signed my son, my son up. I didn't even tell them, Stacy, because I understood, again, I had already been in the networking realm. I understood position. And it's just like with the kingdom of God, everything has a design in an ordained position. So I knew I had to get them in position, get the family in position because they are the successors. That's a word right there. See, listen, if you don't get your family in line, who's going to succeed and lead the legacy. Oh. And so as being entrepreneurs, and especially with Care Bars, God is in this. I'm grateful for Mr. Harold Constantine Zeitz because it had to be a man of God, whether he knows it or not, that God have to implement that into the earth because gold is God's money. Pa paper mm -hmm. is man-made. Paper was man-made. Mm -hmm. I did a whole study on paper and the U.S. dollar and where the dollar... Do you, do you know that the U.S. dollar, originally the name dollar signified a silver coin? Silver coin. Mm -hmm. The dollar had nothing to do with paper. That wasn't... The name dollar for the U.S. currencies didn't get incorporated until the late 1800s. But the mm -hmm. name dollar that we know was derived out of a coin, silver coin. Now watch the irony of this. How is it then that the US Constitution signifies that we're not supposed to pay any type of debt with anything other than gold and silver? Mm. <laughs> and we got tricked in saying, you know what? Give us your gold. We're going to give you this paper money. Mm. <laughs> So, so we've been tricked out of divine kingdom prosperity mm. into chasing paper money because it acquires stuff that has no eternal glory. Wow. Wow. So we're taught and, and we're taught condition and watch this here. So they, they inbred it as so good that they call us consumers. Now, I know you asked me about care bars, but this going into this, because here's why care bars are so significant. It's bringing us back to a divine root that we're not to be conformed and operate in this world system. Gold is God's system. So God said, I'm going to listen, when I first got into care bars, you asked me, the day that I signed up, after I showed my wife and got them, I went to the store, Stacy, and I'm sitting at the light. And I heard the voice of the Lord says, now I'm going to show you whose kingdom and whose religions. And I said, excuse me? He said, I'm going to show you who understands kingdom principle and who's operating out of religion. Because the religious people will fight this because they don't understand divine abundance. Amen. Amen. But God's people understand there is a different operating system that even though we're in the earth, we're supposed to be operating out of a kingdom authority. And gold is a kingdom authority. So we're chasing the dollar instead of operating in God's domain of financial freedom, which is gold. Wow. Which is land which is property. Mm -hmm. What did the Israelites have when they came out? They had gold, they had silver, they had frankincense. Yes. 
And then God said, go and possess what? The land. Mm -hmm. So carry bars is not only giving us that financial authority, but look what it does. It empowers us to now go possess lands. Wow. Uh, I'm going to contain myself. Where have you been? <laughs> Where have you been? You broke this Him. down at a level that I have never heard anybody break this thing down. You, yet you, God is giving you revelation. This is so prophetic. This is so divine. And I thank God for your obedience because. This is gonna slay that religiosity stuff. I'm holding that God. You know? And, and like you said, the um the freelancer, okay, they're the one who said it today, I'm gonna go in the earth to fight for those who can't fight for themselves, basically. And yes. so right now you're slaying a lot of wickedness. <laughs> a lot of generational curses. The Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Just, you said go with God's money. You think that you think that the paper stuff, that's not even, God didn't make that. God didn't make a dollar, you know? And then he was saying that, and he said the dollar was only to buy more stuff, consumer stuff. This is inside the kingdom because that's what it's supposed to be the cleaning of our money. Right? And so, could you explain the part about God's money? So, you said that I was thinking about the tabernacle, the temple, and the book of Revelation. Gold being God's money. Well, well, see, here's the thing you have to realize that I'm, I've been an adamant student of Dr. Miles Monroe, and, and, and Miles was an, a dynamic teacher. He was a dynamic teacher. And, and it was the one principle that he taught about having kingdom authority in the earth. And it was this, that we can't forget the original design and blueprint of what God established. And that was for, watch this now, for man. I'm not talking gender. I'm talking mankind. We are to be fruitful, multiply, mm -hmm. subdue replenish, okay, and have dominion. And so God placed man in the garden and there was four rivers. One of them was gold. Yes. So whatever God designed and created in the garden, that was the blueprint. Now, because man failed, it didn't change God's original purpose. So there was created a garden, which was a place of rest, a place of wealth, a place of resource, and it was surrounded by everything that man needed. So when we look even at man ejecting himself, when God gave us that back because of what Christ did, that means whatever was in the original design comes back to us. Mm. So what is the original design? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. What is the resource? Gold and land. Amen. So gold is God's money. Sin created, okay, because they use that, watch, for the same system that enslaved Israel, which was the people chasing after false gods, who is the king of the earthly realm? Satan himself. So God said, do not be uh, deceived by the subtleness of the enemy. So what is the subtleness making us believe that this has power? when originally the only thing that has power is everything that God created. Mm, the gold. The gold. Mm. The gold, the land, and everything else that's incorporated 
in the land mm -hmm. that's created for our good. Let the church say amen. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody who's listening to this interview to, to write down at least one quote from Mr. Parkinson. I want you to write down a quote and I want you to blow up the timeline with the quotes because we want everybody to learn this. This has been so far just profound, profound. I'm learning so much, you know, and I will never be the same again. I will never be the same again. To God be the glory. Thank you. you. You nailed it. You answered that question. All the questions so far. I mean, with this divine perfection, it's at a different level. And I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to, to glean from what you know. And I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for the I'm grateful for the opportunity and platform because again, this is why I got into entrepreneurship, is because is, is having the ability to share information to help people get free. You know, the, Isaiah 61 and 6 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to what? To preach to the who first? The poor. The poor. See, God foresee, he foresaw everything we're going to need. But we've been, it's been allowed to be manipulated because we're afraid now to stand on the word. Josiah was eight years old. Josiah was eight. Mm -hmm. Josiah found the word of God hid in the temple, covered up. And Josiah opened the word and realized what the elders and the priests were doing was out of line with the word. Mm -hmm. And what we don't see in that story is that there had to be someone there, Stacy, yes. who understood what Josiah was saying and was willing, watch this here, to be a soldier to him because he was eight. He was not at an age to where he could reign and really have an authoritative voice. Mm -hmm. But they could not speak against the word of God because the minute he raised the standard of the word, everything else had to cease to exist. Mm -hmm. And so when we raise up the standard of the word of God again, which is what's happening for so many of us with gold, because gold is the power that was created in the garden. Yeah. And when we embrace that and put that back into the hands of the people, now we're in the position of the Godhead and giving everyone the wealth, the wisdom, the resources for them to take their rightful position as heirs to the throne. Ooh. Heirs to the throne, royal blessings, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We say God is our father. He's king. And so... yes. Why would we even try to be slaves when our daddy is king? And so thank you for talking about order. Going back to God's original plan in Josiah, you said he was eight years old and eight is symbolic of new beginning. And so God yes. is trying to fulfill his word where he said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And he, God is trying to answer prayers, but the lack of knowledge. And so those who yes. are you know, being enlightened are, are going to be able to get their new beginning. And I, I thank you for explaining that. And so I can see why you know why you have chosen Carabars. The next question is why did you choose Carabars and you explain that? And so how can Carabars help other families? Uh, I, I, I think everything that was said is really all encompassing of that because it's going to help other families by giving them that financial legacy again. One is going to give them um, a, a financial platform, foundation, let me say a financial foundation by which their generations can stand upon, they can build upon. And, and then two, it's going to give them an empowering that can only come from the father above that is going to help them attract the wealth of the earth, which is why it says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for, because now we're getting a revelation. See, look, look what this one, in, one entity does. Carry bars puts us on a path of financial revelation that can only come from one place. And then God gives us all a wisdom to seek out what has been hidden. Gold is hid in the earth. So wisdom allows us to mind knowledge. 
Oh, I hope you heard what I'm saying. We're we're not only are we mining gold, but we're mining knowledge because the more we mine knowledge, the more the increase in the revelation of who God is and what God is doing in the earth is released unto his people so that we can better build our platform for the generations to come. So, so now we're out of the world system. We're, see, because what did the world create? Watch this now. Again, we're talking about messages and we're talking about uh, $40,000 a year of, 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 of conditioning We're getting knowledge. We're getting revelation. We're getting financial freedom. And we're getting back what we were robbed of, which is God's gold. Hmm. And so now that that's happening, we're moving into a different playing field, which now is a birthing. I really believe this is really birthing of a different type of entrepreneur. Because it's just like the stream I did the other day when I talk about having the arrogance of faith. See, arrogance is having a superimposed thought about oneself. But that's really what faith is. But it's directed in what we're believing for. So what it does, what Carrot Bars does for family is it gives them that scripture that says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, oh. the evidence of things not seen. What are, what are people in the church hoping for? Financial freedom. How do you know that? Because otherwise we wouldn't be teaching about tithes and offerings because the scripture says that should be the less of what we're teaching. We shouldn't even have to teach tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. We're only teaching it because we got a people who don't have abundance. Because people who have abundance, it's not even an issue because they understand that God is blessing them. So we're giving now God's people, I'm going to say it that way, we're giving them back their rightful ownership and position in him. How else could one opportunity collectively bring together every race, creed, color, nationality unto one umbrella and we're not fighting. Not one bit. Unity. Nobody but a God. Ooh. Nobody but a God. Okay. So what it does, what Care Bars does for family, it gives them power back. It gives them position back. It gives them prosperity back. It mm -hmm. gives them a preventive way to secure their family's legacy and they don't have to leave a GoFundMe account. Mm. They don't have to tap into that world system of leaving debt anymore. And begging. And begging, Please. exactly. My mm. goodness. Ooh, you said um, with carrot bars, you know, when doing this business with the wealth builders and thank God for the leaders, all of us are leaders, but Mr. Ty Best, the founder, and, you know, Mr. Dalco and everything, we we're learning knowledge, and with the knowledge, you said we're getting revelation, and we're getting the finances, the financial education as well, and you said we're getting back the God's gold. Do you think we're also getting back time? Oh, very much so. Very. Listen, um, Care Bars has allowed, because of Care Bars, let me say it this way, because of Care Bars and the sacrifices I was willing to make as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer, was to stand in a rank to where I said, come hell or high water, this is going to work because it's not just working for me and my family, but I can see it operating for other people. But because of carrot bars, my wife is able to work on her dream as being an event coordinator, watch this here, with godly principles and character to where she can offer event planning, um, uh, consulting, Watch this, at a price point everyone can afford. Is that not God? Why? Because she's not going to miss out because now she can live her dream of being able to help people who can't afford these big elaborate events that the world is making money off of and not giving anything in return. So is it giving back time? Yeah. 
Now she don't have to work for anybody selling her time. Now she's taking her time and investing it in other people. And here's what the word says. Here's the principle of this. Whatsoever you sow, that you shall reap. So she has time to sow a godly nature. And God provides the increase. And God is going to reap the blessings. Oh. Whew. And that reminds me how God said, I'll restore unto you the years the palmer worms ate up. <laughs> Stacy, listen, listen. We, my wife, my wife will tell you because she talks about it. My wife had uh, weight loss surgery and everything. And with weight loss, I'm going <laughs> to with weight loss surgery, now my wife, she's lost amazing weight. She looks good. That's why that, yeah, that man, if it wasn't for everybody needed Yolanda Parkinson for a wife, but there's only one. But anyway, <laughs> she just told me today uh, because they've got to do an, a, an additional surgery because of the weight loss. She called me. She said, baby, guess what? I said, what? Do you know they already have me scheduled for surgery? I said, what do you mean? We were waiting to hear back from the hospital for them to get everything up and tell us what extra money was going to be needed for an additional part of this thing. She said, baby, they got me set up for November 1st for surgery. Mm. Wow. I said, they did what? See, I can't tell all the testimony yet because oh. people don't understand. And here we are helping other people. I mean, it's just, when you have your time, See, watch this here. When you have your time, you have time to hear from God. You have time to receive from God. And you have time to sow into God. Mm -hmm. And what the world system have done is robbed us of our time because now we don't have time for God because most people that make time to go to church they're going out of obligation because it's Sunday mm -hmm. and that's the thing to do. Yeah. And they're not going to really receive. They're going to fulfill a commitment. Mm -hmm. Nope. They're going to fulfill a religious traditional response. That's it. Religiosity. Because Yeah, I said it, y'all. For those y'all watching, I said it. Yes, I said it. Because see, mm -hmm. when you have time you got time to get into the presence of God. You got time to sow into God. You have the time to watch this here. To sow. Listen, God orchestrated the family. So why would God, oh my gosh, you took me down a rabbit hole. Let me paint this picture and I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to get this back to you. I want to show you this. I want to show you this. If God is the orchestrator of family, okay, and he's conditioned the family to grow together, because watch what the word of God says. Now, we've got to go back to the beginning in, in, in Deuteronomy when he talks about reading to our children. He says, make the word a necklace. Mm -hmm. Put it on the ear. Put it on placards as their forehead. Hang it around their neck. Now, watch this here because watch the subtleness of the enemy. I'm going I'm to give you a deep revelation now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He says, how can the woman teach this? How can that be taught in the house except they're in the house? Because it says when they go to sleep, when they walk by the way, when they rise up early, keep it before them. How can you do that if you're not there? Watch this. Because the enemy has subtly came in, and this is what many of our black men here, you got, the word says, you got to work by the sweat of your brow. That was the curse. No man that is not under the curse have to sweat for they work. Because he understand his kingdom authority that he can establish a thing, and it happens. So when you look at an entrepreneur or a freelancer, you have a kingdom man or a kingdom woman who can decree a thing and it becomes. 
Why? Because I don't have to work for the blessings of God. Mm. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. So I don't have to work for anything. I have time to do what we like to teach in church because it sounds so politically correct. I have the time to seek ye first the kingdom of God. I have that time because I'm not selling my time for paper mm. because I have God's financial reservoir, which is his presence and his present of gold. Everybody better hit the heart button. Go ahead. Just go and blow it up right there. Go on and click, 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 click. Listen, the revelation, I know I'm set free. I bet you a lot of people are going to be quitting their jobs. <laughs> wow. You don't turn on like a, I mean, open up a floodgate over us. Like, all the four rivers are flowing in us, around us, upon us. The four rivers in the book of Genesis. And those rivers are prophetic by itself. One means burst and forth. Another one is fruitful. I mean, the revelation. If people don't understand after you're finished, like you said, you have those who are religious, those who are children. <laughs> heirs to the throne. And so you're going to be able to tell who's who real quick. Yeah. Yeah, I'm real quick. I'm seeing it. See, because watch this here. Here's the thing about it. When, when we talk about entrepreneurs and you're talking about really God's king, because watch, every, every disciple, every disciple had a trade. Now, 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 here's the one thing I have heard properly taught. When Jesus called them, they were able to leave their family and their possessions. And nothing went lack. Why? Because they were operating prior to that off of kingdom principles. Wow. You had a you had a you had a doctor, you had a lawyer. You fisherman was a profession. Yes. They they wasn't they they wasn't just uh leisure fishermen, it was their profession profession. Why were they entrepreneurs? Because they answered a problem. And the problem was to give food in the land. So their trade, their gift, was the opportunity to provide a solution that benefited and helped other people. Wow. And while it helped other people, they benefited from it. See, God shows you this way. What you make happen for others, he'll make. When you decide that what you're going, this is why care bonds is significant. When you decide that what you have is greater than you and you're going to help other people, God has got to back that. It's its principle. Amen. Amen. Because why? We just use he loves a good, a, a cheerful giver as in reference to money to him. No. God loves a person who can give out of a cheerful heart and, and the only way you can give it is to, to give it out of a reservoir that is never ending. Because how can you give what you don't have? <laughs> and once again, you can see who is a child of the king and the others. And that's why they don't, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Because it's going to force you to look in the mirror and see your face and see that you're out of order. You've been talking about order for this whole time. Getting back in order and alignment with the word of God and God's will. And that's what it is. Many of us have been out of order. What happens to your arm if you break the, you know, break the bones? They have to do what? They got to put it back in place. And so many yes. people are disjointed, just out of order. And they, they've known it, but maybe didn't want to face the truth. But today is a day of reckoning. You can't say God didn't tell you. We got to get back in order. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you God. And so you explain how um, Carabars can help other families. What advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are trying to gain momentum and trying to see results? And you already know how that goes. You're trying to push through from the system. You're trying to pick up momentum. You're trying to see the results. Like, what advice would you give? 
Uh, I guess the biggest advice I could give any entrepreneur um, is, is this. Find someone who's doing what you want to do and then allow them to mentor you. See, the thing about being an entrepreneur is that you have to realize not only are you stepping now, let me say now in this present state, uh, there's no sense in trying to recreate the wheel. Okay, the wheel is already created. Entrepreneurship is already established. And we have some, listen, we have people like Mr. Ty Betts, uh, Network Hall, Hall of Fame. You have people like Michael Delco. I mean, I can go on with a list of people. So you don't have to go out there and jump in the water now and just really learn how to swim because there's too many coaches and teachers out there who are willing to show you. Now, I can only talk in reference to carrot bars at this point because for an entrepreneur and a person who's really getting into carrot bars and really this is their first opportunity in the networking realm is to get with the people who have, first of all, not just been an entrepreneur for a while, but who have suffered, let me say that again, who has suffered and overcome. See, because you can get with somebody that's been in the networking industry and been, watch this here, and this is not to slight anyone, because the person who's been in networking and has always been successful, there's nothing you can really glean from them. Yeah. It's the person who's been in networking and had, as Mr. Best said, see his book, The Dream Chaser Manifesto, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Because you can see his highs, his lows, and how he overcame. A person who's been successful and have never had to go through anything, they can't tell you when you hit a low mark because you don't have the same mantle that they have. See, it's, it's the same thing when you compare Elijah and Elisha. You got to be the Elisha who won't leave Elijah's side, even though Elijah says, stay here. You like, no, it's too much. I need to know. Yes. So I'm not going to stay back. I don't care how much confidence you have in me. I know me and I know what I see and what I want. See, what happens for, for some people who get in this thing, they think they got it. Hmm. Is that pride? You, 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 you <laughs> I was trying not to say pride, but it is what it is. Okay. It's, it's pride and ego. See, I'm the person I would tell, I told Mr. Delco, I said, I give you open access to my life. I, I told him, I said, if you see me posting something crazy, let me know. Why? Because you've got to be able to hold yourself accountable to someone. The only way you're going to be able to be great is to allow someone in your life who can correct you. Oh, I just said a taboo word there because many of us don't like to be corrected. Uh, listen, if you want to be successful, you need someone in your life who can correct you, but correct you out of love and not manipulation. Amen. Out of love, not manipulation. See, that, that's a significant... I'm not going to go down that river. Get somebody who's going to correct you out of love so that they are drawing out all of your God-given potential so that you can excel. So to all the, the new networking entrepreneurs that may be on this stream, you know, tap into the individual that, one, God is calling you to, not just because you see that person and you want to jump on their coattail. Yeah. Ask God to give you your Elijah, mm. the person who is going to unconditionally sow and breathe into your life and to pull out everything God has put in you and then stay with them until they pass you the mantle. Wow. Wow. Talk about kingdom principles because nowadays you don't have that loyalty people who are willing to stick you know together it's like everybody want to do their own thing but you you just mm -hmm. it with the elijah I, I call the other one Elisha to separate them like humbling yourself you know and learning from somebody else the same way naomi but naomi and ruth ruth humble herself and let naomi and naomi wasn't even perfect she wasn't perfect, but she still had some things that we can learn, you know, learn about. Yeah. So the mentor might not be 
100, you know, 100% perfect, you can still learn something, you know. Yeah. And so, yes. Wow. Exactly. I mean, you can learn from anyone. Yes. I mean, both good and negative. My grandmother taught me never stop learning. That's why I'm adamant about learning. That's why I can learn from anyone. And it, but but as you mature, you have to know, again, it goes back, and I hate being cliche, but you have to know how to uh, eat the hay and spit out the straw, okay? <laughs> and, and still be able to grow. See, that's the thing. You still got to be able to grow because even the word of God says that even speaking to Peter, you got to be teachable. That's the first thing. And the only way you can be teachable is to be humble. Listen, you might come to the table a millionaire in care bars, but if you're not teachable, you're not going to go any further. Yeah. So, so we got to be teachable. And we, we have to be in a position to where we can not only glean, but we can glean, learn, grow, and duplicate. Yes. My old That's pastor taught me this. <laughs> you, you need to always have a Paul and you need to always have a Peter in your life. Somebody that's pulling you up and somebody you pulling up. Yes. It keeps you balanced. Yes. It keeps you balanced. Balanced. I heard that word somewhere before. Mr. Dalco, he was saying, you know, be balanced. Don't be running, you know, a thousand miles per hour. You know, and then next thing you know, you're crashing. He said, find that place of balance in your life, you know, and and the same thing with having a mentor, you know, and having some a, a mentee because all of us, I like how you just broke that down because you might be, you might be a mentee for, to somebody else, but you can also be a mentor to somebody else, you know, and so it just brings balance. Oh, you humble. <laughs> Good. I'm going to be watching the job. Isn't this awesome? That's in the background. You know, managing everything. Oh. <laughs> hey, Doug. Awesome. Awesome. There you go. Hi. Hi, Phyllis. How you doing? <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm fan glorious, Doc. I'm, I'm amazing. Uh, what you're saying is so true. Mm -hmm. every, every word you said is true. Everything. Yeah. And I like when you said uh, about a soldier and a current to a uh, autopsy ship. We have to have discipline. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Man, I thank y'all. I, I got much love for y'all. I appreciate it again. I, I'm grateful. I'm glad. You know that I'm, I'm able to share, but just to be able to be on a platform like this, y'all don't know how much it is blessing uh, of me. So thank you all for this opportunity. Uh, you're welcome. Yes. Uh, please share this broadcast. Don't forget, I want you to put some quotes, and I want you to quote this awesome entrepreneur and man of God. I want you to find some quotes, and I want you to quote because you want to put the word, you want to plant the word as seeds in the earth. You know, and you know, words are powerful. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. And so we want to plant good seed on Facebook and all of our social media accounts. So thank you, Mr. Parkinson, for, you know, teaching us today. You know, God bless you. So much. Thank, you. thank you. God bless you. And your family. I pray your wife has a successful um, surgery. You said November 1st, right? And, and well, we're going to, yeah, it, we're not going to do it until the 9th of December because she, okay. look, she got a big event she got to do in November. So... <laughs> Okay. But God. So we, we just pray for everything to work out for your family. We pray that yes. you bless your business, bless your family, bless your bloodline exceedingly and abundantly. I pray Jeremiah 29 over you and your household, for I know the plans I have for you. Say it, the Lord. Yes. To prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Listen, go direct the elite, elite, elite. Oh, listen, go to the top. May God give you the houses that care bars give out and the cars. Everything for your bloodline and for all of us who are the freelancers. I pray that God, listen, watch. Watch what God getting ready to do. God is getting ready to build his people up exponentially because he knows that we're going to give him all the glory. 
And when they get up on the stage, all glory the one who owns all the glory, and that's God. It's not going to be us, because we're just vessels, and everybody will know that there is a God, Yahweh, and, and you're going you're gonna to see it. I can feel it. I feel like God is rallying his people to get the walk And those who are in position, like you said, you define order. Those who are in position are going to get the wealth transfer. Those who are out of order, they will miss it. And I've been telling them, get in position. The window is open. I don't know how long it's going to be open for because the things change with the shadow bars. The windows are open. The portal is open. And God is giving a walk he said a good spirit is going to leave an inheritance to their grandchildren. The grandchildren. And then it said the wealth is in sort of a crisis. So get in position. Stop letting the enemy deceive you. Stop chasing these jobs. You're going to miss no blessing chasing after these jobs. And so <laughs> go and possess your blessing right now. Get your free gold savings account. Somebody yes. this with you. Go to their link. It's a free account. You're paying yourself in physical gold. You get to leave the business to your children. It's so biblical. It's so kingdom. We have the keys of the kingdom. Go and get it. God is showing you. God is showing you. The man of God sat here and Broke it down. There, I'm like, whoa! I can see myself. I'm like, whoa! This is so good. <laughs> I'm no. taking notes all over the place, and I'm gonna go back and rewatch it because this was the Lord speaking, and He will Let's go. Hear, let him hear. If you don't understand, okay, get your pick it down. Get, get a mentor, the person who's sharing this with you. Okay, that person could be your mentor or somebody else, whoever God is leading you to. Because only the only thing God wants to do is honor his word. And he said, I want to restore back unto you the years the palmer worms ate up in your life. Do you want it or not? I told you that wealth and riches belong in the house of the righteous. Do you want your riches? Yeah. Do you want your riches? Yes, not? yes. It's yes or no. And so when you chase these jobs and you know you're away from your family and, and you're getting lack, you're telling God no. But you can change that today. And you can let the Lord show you how to use your job to fund your freedom. You can you can tell you can show God you're serious by doing better. Because we can say yeah. a lot of stuff, but faith without works is dead. And I'm gonna tell you right now, don't be afraid. One of the first things that the of God said was, the freelancer is a soldier, and the soldier takes risks. The soldier yeah. is not afraid of battling anything, because the battle's already won. Jesus Christ already won. Yeah. The battle belongs to God. So, he sees that a freelancer is great. They're willing to fight and go against all odds. Don't be afraid. I know it's sometimes scary to be a pioneer, to be the first to step out, but God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. 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 I'm Amen. this broadcast with the Amen. blood. I seal our families with the blood of Jesus, and we yeah. continue to pray and declare that we shall see immediate breakthroughs in our people, yes. you know, in our, yes. in our finances and all areas yes. of our lives. Because when your money is right, you know, your time is back, you're free. And you can spend time with your spouse and, and, and heal that marriage and make the marriage better. And you can spend time with yeah. your children. You know, you can go on vacation and, and rest. Not just rest. Some of us have been working and working and working. But he said, come on to me. Those of you who are stressed out, I'm giving you yes. an opportunity where you can rest and you can take a break and you can just exhale and and just be new creatures like I told you that you were through Christ. Anything else, man? Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I'm done. Uh, you just said it. I'm done. I'm taking all of it in now. Oh, my God. I listen. I'm going to go over here with Doug and we're going to listen to it again. 
So to make sure that we Bless you. digest it fully and never forget Bless you. that God on this day, what is it, the 23rd of October, 2019? Yes. God did something so divine. He yes. This week was a week of metamorphosis. And this thing right here, I felt it. Wow. Like there's a shift. Like we, yeah. we, would never, we would never be the same again leaving this stream ever. And man of God, get ready. Get ready. I'm ready. Get ready. I'm in receive because mode. They need to hear your voice. Bless you. Understand. Bless you. Yes. Okay? Because <laughs> God has called you for such a time as this. For you to break break the word of God down the way you do. Bless you. Because you said that, you quoted the word, you said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So here come God, raising the Mr. Park in his family to make sure that Bless he you. can deliver the message to the people who Bless need you. desperately, because a lot of God's people are starving. And so get ready for them to call your name mm. in the name of Jesus. You can't overlook Joseph. Ever. Mm. Mm. Ever. They try to make him a slave. They try to make him a prisoner. <laughs> and he flourished. He flourished as a, as, a, as a slave. He, he was never a slave. And he flourished as a prisoner. Mm. And then, boom. One day, Pharaoh had a dream. And like you said, God called you to solve problems. And the only person who could solve that problem interpret the dream that was Joseph and so they called him from the dungeon the Bible said dungeon mm -hmm. and he became second in command in Egypt and so get ready for your elevation you cannot overlook those God has been preparing for such a time as this no matter how hard you try been chosen for such a time as this. The sheep is starving and they need good food. And so, yeah, get ready. In the name of Jesus, and may God bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. You just brought glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And out of your own mouth, you said, whatever you do for God, God will bless you so good. Get ready. You made the Father happy today. Because he blesses you. I just want to let you know that. Thank you. It's loving you. And children, may God raise them up to be great in the earth. Greater, greater. Your children, your bloodline. In the name of Jesus, may your marriage just be a great example to others. May the love in your marriage be so strong, and your love for God and just everything just be at the heart of it. And may the name of God be the new place of the light. May God just send out the light for blessings upon you, where you will have no room enough to receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, may God give it to you. The floodgates are open, open up over your life. And God is pleased with you. May God bring his favor down upon you. And everybody who needs it. All of us, favor. Mm. Access. Yes, access. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. God has been blessed. Amen. And I'll talk to you again. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got to get off of here before I keep on going. <laughs>